Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about amplitude and resolution. I had to look at the title myself, I wasn't sure. Um, in your rooms, and we all spend a lot of time in our room, and it doesn't matter what the room is, control room, listening room, live room, if you're recording, there's that certain pressure level. There's that certain dB pressure level that the room just sounds really good. You know, it, it has good definition. The low end is defined. The mids are clear, clean. Uh, the highs sparkle, you know, without that pitch problem that highs get, that screechiness, which we could probably do on the blackboard with my fingernails. But there's that, you know, right pressure area where the room is, is sounding as good as, you know, you want it to sound, really. It, it, you're happy with the sound. And you'll find if you record that sound pressure level over time, you'll start to see some consistencies. We do it naturally in our studio when we're listening. And we have three, four, five years of data. And what we discovered is this in our studio, that the 83 to 87 dB SPL range is where the room really sounds good. Now, that's a nice wide range, so you, you know, if you want a little more push in the bass, you want a little more emphasis on the vocals, you know, and you're at 83, punch it up, 84, you should be able to hear 1 dB of resolution in your room easily. We're fortunate in our studios, we hear half dB, in some situations a quarter dB. But if you can find that balance where everything in the room sounds good. Now, why does it, well, let's go back to this. If you turn the gain up 1 dB, things change. So you have to realize what that means. Sounds good here, but if I give it a little more there, it doesn't sound so good. Or one part of the presentation sounds good and one part doesn't. And what part is the one that usually doesn't sound good? If you push it up, it's the low end. Well, what that tells you is that you haven't really treated the surface areas correctly or with the right type, amount, and position of that treatment in the room. So pressure can really tell you a lot about how well you've done in treating the room. If you're a guy who likes EDM music like we just did a video on and, and you're the person that likes classical with big percussion and stuff like that, you want to focus on that low end of your room so that you can get yourself a nice listening range that you know you can work with because all musics are recorded so differently today all genres are different um, I don't know how people survive without EQs at the listening position I, I wouldn't be able to live without one especially in the low end so if your room sounds good, there's technical reasons why. It's not an accident and it's not magic, okay? Your reflections. Your speaker boundary interference effect has been managed well. There's no comb filtering present. You've got good volume. You've got good speaker size. You've got good room size. Everything is balanced. It's not an accident that your room sounds good in a certain pressure range. Now, if you want to change that and widen the range of, of listening and acceptability, happiness, if you will, with it, then you have to look at what's going on in the room in terms of treatment. I always tell people getting good sound quality out of a room is about doing a lot of little things correctly, but more importantly, in the correct order. Because everything you do, step four builds on step three. Step three builds on step two. Step two builds on step one. You can't cut corners. You can't skip steps because every step is dependent on it. If you keep stip skipping steps, by the time you get to step nine or ten, the error rate in each step that you, you've skipped becomes audible. So you have to pay attention to detail. You have to pay attention to the distortions in the room in order to realize you know, this kind of situation. So hope this helps there's no magic a lot of people call me and say you know in my last room it was good at 83 to 85 db spl now my new room i can't hear anything at any pressure level well then we start talking about the treatment that they had in the last room we start talking about the size of the last room how much volume the room had and immediately the differences start to come into play 
So there's reasons for everything. And if you want a wider range of pressure that, that you can make the room sound better, you can treat for it. And it's always about surface area. It's always all about adding more to treat the problem. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.